Hello everyone and welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today as we are going to speak about how you can create conversation simulations with iSpring TalkMaster 8.3. My name is Paulina, I am a Community Manager at iSpring and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. As a speaker we have Brian Tarr. Hello Brian, how are you doing? Hi, doing great, thanks. Perfect. Brian is an iSpring video producer and you might have seen some of his videos on our website or the official YouTube channel. And also we have Elena Golovina. Hello Elena, are you excited for the today's webinar? Yes, sure, I'm super excited. <laughs> so am I. Um, Elena is our customer care manager and she is working with iSpring clients, helping them to figure out how iSpring can be a perfect fit for their needs. Elena will announce a special bonus for all the webinar attendees at the end of our event. And also, we have prepared something exciting for you guys. At the end of the webinar, we will give away a free lifetime license for iSpring Talk Master. And in order to win, you need to be present. So make sure to stay with us till the end of this webinar. After that, we're also going to have a Q&A section, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to submit them in the question section on the right side of your GoToWebinar window. And at this point, I think that I'm ready to pass over to Brian, so Brian, you are more than welcome to begin. Okay, let me get set up here. Sure. And for those people who are just arriving and uh, joining our webinar, I want to say one more time that at the end we're going to have a giveaway of the free lifetime license for TalkMaster 8.3. So make sure to stay with us till the very end. Okay, everybody. Hi, it's Brian, and I'm uh, really super excited to show you the capabilities of iSpring TalkMaster here. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. We can okay, see great. It. All right, so iSpring TalkMaster is a great tool for creating dialogue simulations that help your employees get used to communicating with clients. And this can be useful in many spheres like sales, customer service, basically any job that involves communicating, which is just about all of them. iSpring TalkMaster has a lot of cool features to make your simulations more realistic, like a character and background library and even voiceovers in version 8.3. And the best way to show you is to dive in, so let's get started. To begin with, I'm going to show you how a finished dialogue looks, and then we'll get into how it works. You can preview a dialogue at any time by clicking the preview button. And this is how it will appear to a learner. This dialogue has been created to train salespeople in the automotive industry. Obviously, that's a job that requires a lot of tact and timing, so a simulation like this can really help a new salesperson get more comfortable with the process. Now here we're provided with some choices, and in fact the timing element comes into play right away. You don't want to be too aggressive, but you also don't want to be too shy. Let's see what happens if we're a little too aggressive. The character's emotion changes, and we get an instant feedback message explaining our mistake. But we still have a chance to get back on track, and here the dialogue itself begins. So that's how the dialogue looks for the user. Let's see how to make it. So when you start a new dialogue, you'll see a blank background where you can add scenes. Let's click New Scene. Right over here you can choose your character and there's a built-in library with several to choose from. And here's our lady and there's also a set of emotions to choose from but we can just keep it normal for now. <coughs> Excuse me. And now let's go to the background tab and set a location and here you also have a, an extensive library of backgrounds to choose from and you can even add your own with this button right here. So let's choose the automotive showroom. And now we can close this to return to the scene. And here you can enter the character's dialog. And to add reply choices, you just click this button right here. And add as many as you like. And then simply drag them out to new scenes with this little link icon right here. So let's say at this point in the dialogue she's already given you a firm budget for a car. So if you offer her an expensive one, 
she decides to go. And we can change her emotion to angry. And let's also give the user a constructive feedback message. Now if we were continuing the dialogue, we could drag out another scene here, but this was a fatal faux pas. So to make it uh, easier to identify these endpoints, you can just go to Properties and change the color like that. So now I'm going to show you how scoring works. First you go to Properties, and then check this box to enable scoring. Enter your passing score here, and then decide whether to show it to the user at the end with this drop-down. And when you're done, click OK. Now let's say this was really the perfect choice to make. Just go to Properties and give the user some points. And that'll show up right here in the right-hand corner. So basically what this scheme illustrates is the wrong choice, the perfect choice, and a neutral choice. So even if the user makes a neutral choice, you can still give them a chance to make their way back around to a successful dialogue. And also what you'll see up here is if a scene doesn't have any incoming links, you'll be notified. So you don't have to keep track of, oh, did I link this scene to that scene? Does this scene have any incoming links? You'll be notified of all that stuff. And you can set any scene as the starting scene by just clicking this flag right here. Or you can delete it here. Or just preview any scene by clicking this play button right here. So let's offer her the expensive car. And now you can see she gets mad and it shows up on the emotion meter. And here's her dialogue text and the user score and the feedback message and a restart and finish button. So now let's just scroll down and take a look at this completed dialogue. The flag here shows the starting scene, and you can easily identify the endpoints and color code different dialogue paths. And you can just zoom in to get a better look at scene numbers and dialogue text and points awarded and stuff like that. And if you want, you can sprinkle in bonus points, as I said, throughout the scene for the user to earn for tactfulness and listening skills, whatever. So finally, when you're ready to publish, just click Publish on the toolbar. And if you're using this as part of iSpring Suite, you can actually publish this as part of a full PowerPoint-based course. You can publish for the web or iSpring Cloud hosting and sharing service, iSpring Learn LMS, or an LMS of your choice. And there are a few different formats to choose from. Combined is the safest choice for widest compatibility, but you're pretty safe with HTML5 for most devices since Flash is pretty much phasing out these days. And you can also offer this, uh, this course on iSpring Play free mobile app for your users to take it offline. And here there are some extra tabs for compression options, advanced options, and LMS formats. As you can see, we support a wide range of popular formats. I'd be happy to go into those a little more in the Q&A if you like. And when you're ready, click Publish. And even a pretty big dialogue like this only takes a few seconds to publish. And here in the preview window, you can check out how it looks on different devices like tablets and smartphones. You can even rotate the device. And as you can see, the responsive design automatically adapts to fit the device's orientation and screen size. And you can also view it in browsers open the folder to see the files, attach it to an email, or put it right on your website. So that's about it for the features. Uh, I'm ready to show you 8.3, but we can field a few questions first, if you like. Let's see, do we have any questions? Um, guys, if you have any questions, would you please submit them in the question box on the right side of your GoToWebinar window? Looks like we're pretty clear, so uh, I think I can move right on to voiceovers. Yep. Thank you. Let me just open this other dialog. There is one question, though. Um, is it possible to load other people? As I'm assuming that means characters. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, that button I showed you uh, right here, you can go to Images and Character. And you can add a character by clicking this button right here. 
and then just find the file on your computer. And uh, what I recommend is using PNG files with transparent backgrounds. And you can just take uh, pictures of your colleagues, make it more realistic, stuff like that. And also, uh, there is a question. Images and scenari scenarios are free to use? Yeah. Yeah. These are all built in, free to use. Can you substitute voice for text in the questions? Excellent question. That's exactly what I was about to show you right here as soon as we, as soon as we move on. And uh, one more question before we move on to the next part. So it can be embedded into a PowerPoint slide. Yes, it can. Uh, here's an example of a PowerPoint presentation with a, a dialogue simulation embedded on a slide. All you have to do is just make a new slide and click simulation. And it'll open Talk Master and then you, once you click save and close it'll be inserted right on the slide. Thank you. And Brian. I actually see somebody, I, I'm sorry, I, I saw somebody asking why PNG versus JPEG. Mm -hmm. That's because uh, JPEG is compressed so it's impossible to have transparent layers in a JPEG file. So PNG is the format to use for that. Okay, ready to move on? Yep. Okay, great. So uh, now uh, this new feature added in version 8.3 is adding voiceovers. Uh, you can make your dialogue simulation more realistic and engaging uh, by adding recordings to match the user, the character, and the narrator. So all you got, all you got to do is just click voiceover, and you'll see a full list of your dialogue scenes and the text and all here. And the icons on the left-hand side indicate whether it's the narrator, the character, or the user reply choices. And before we start recording, let's check out the microphone setup wizard. This will open automatically when you record for the first time, but you can always access it via the file menu and settings. Just click up setup, click setup microphone right here, and click next to select a device. And I'm actually using a professional microphone, can you notice? And in that case, I would select other here, but no matter what kind of microphone you're using, this wizard will automatically select the optimum settings, whether it's a headset, desktop, built-in laptop, webcam, mic, anything. So just click next and you'll see some recommendations. And here we give you some text to read. And as soon as the wizard gets a good signal from your mic, you can click next. I hope I won't have to read about this cat. Maybe we can talk about the weather a little bit. There we go. Detected my mic. Can just click next. And the microphone is set up. So just click OK to get out of this box. <clears throat> and now here next to any scene you like, you can just click record to record audio directly into it. And here you can just click to show the narration script. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you're ready, just click record. Brian, could you please uh, show uh, one more time how you got the mic wizard? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so anyway, when you're done recording, just click OK. Right, microphone wizard can be accessed right here via the app menu and settings. And there it is, set up microphone. Okay. So now here that we recorded that, it shows a play button you can use to preview it. And you, if you have pre-recorded audio, excuse me, you can also uh, import them by clicking this button right here. Just find the file. And as you notice here, the, this column shows the standard file names to use when you're recording in a third-party program. So what you can do here is import them in bulk by just going to the Import drop-down, go to Bulk Import, and here it pop up, pops up with some instructions on how to name your files. Just select as many as you like. And they will be automatically imported. And you'll see an import results window. And your dialogue will be populated with audio. And it's uh, worth mentioning here that if you already recorded something or imported something, 
if you import something with this file name using bulk import, it will overwrite whatever you recorded here or imported here. So it's good to remember that. So yeah, you can preview any of the audio just by clicking the play button or delete it by clicking the X. And here from the toolbar, you can edit audio, you can delete audio as well, and you can export the entire script to a text document to, uh, to share with voice talent for recording. And when you're done, just close voiceover mode, and you're back in your dialogue editor. So that's it for my part. Uh, I guess I'll pass it over to Elena to tell you about the special offer available only to webinar participants. Yes. And I, I guess we can answer all of the questions at the Q&A section. Yeah, guys, yeah. don't worry. We did not forget about your questions. We will get back to them as soon as we give away a TalkMaster license. All right. OK, ready to share your screen? Yep. OK. OK, so. Can you see the yep. yeah. screen? OK, so um, for all webinar attendees, we are more than happy to offer an exclusive discount on new purchases, upgrades, and additional licenses for iSpring TalkMaster and iSpring Suite. And along with that, you get a free three-month subscription of iSpring Cloud. So if you are interested in this offer, simply send your email as a private message in the question box or in, in the chat box and we'll get back to you after the webinar. And I'd like to note one more time that iSpring TalkMaster is available as a separate tool or as a part of iSpring Suite, our top product for e-learning authoring. It's our full package. So that's the special offer. Right. Don't, don't forget to submit your emails, and we'll get back to you right after the webinar. Right. So now the giveaway. Yep. <laughs> so what we're going to do is uh, I have the um, number, um, the unique number for all our webinar attendees. So uh, we will generate a random number with uh, Elena's help. And Elena, could you please set the range from uh, 15 mm -hmm. to 164? 64. All right. So let's do, 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 do. Here we go. Drum roll, please. 51. <laughs> number 51. Number 51. It's uh, Cheryl Bowley, I guess. The last name is, is B-O-E-H-L-Y. And Cheryl, are you one of our attendees? Yes, I see Cheryl. And I can say congratulations. You just won the <laughs> iSpring Talk Master license. We will get back All to right. you as soon as the webinar ends uh, with the license details. Congratulations. Yay. Yay. Yay, congrats. All right. All right. So right now, I think that we're ready to move on to the Q&A section. And uh, I see some questions uh, coming up. So, Brian, are you ready? <laughs> Yeah, sure. So uh, one question from Ellen is, can you delete the text and leave audio only or hide the text? Yes, absolutely. Here, let me uh, share my screen. Oh, one sec. Oops. Can you do that? Uh, yeah. Or do you... Okay. Okay, see my screen? Yep. yep. Right, so let's say here you are in voiceover, and let's say you have a recording for this intro text. Actually, let's, let's make it easier. Let's make it just hello. So if you don't want to show that hello text, just find that part and delete it. Oops. How did that happen? Uh, 
Uh, sorry about that, folks. There we go. Okay, yeah, just delete the text. And as you can see here, Hello. it plays the, uh, the text, but it doesn't show it. And here they have play, playback controls so they can replay it if they didn't hear it. So I think that also answers another question from Peter. Could we oh, hear some recording? Yeah, sure. We'll just continue here. Hello. There's hello. Mm -hmm. And you click Good that. Morning, this is Mary from Custom Support. How can I help you? Yes, good morning. I want to cancel the last transaction on my credit. And you've got audio for each Thank of these. For calling us today. Please visit your local branch and request an account statement. You've suggested an acceptable solution. However, you could have tried to help the client by a phone. Hmm, I recognize that voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's so, how it works. Yeah, that's how it sounds. And um, a question from Brandy. Can you attach mm -hmm. pre-recorded audio? And I think that you've already uh, showed that. Yeah. Sure, I'll be happy to show that again. So uh, all you need to do is go to any scene in the dialog and you can import an individual file by clicking the this open icon the folder icon right next to any of these but what I would recommend you do especially if you have a long dialog simulation like this is either record it yourself or have professional voice talent record it for you and just name all the files like this so uh, scene 9 and there it is, C9M. So that makes it not only easier to sort, but also when you're doing a bulk import, you can just select the files, and it'll import them all automatically. Yeah, so once again, that's uh, bulk import. It's right here from the import drop-down. And um, Ryan, a question from Chris. Mm -hmm. What is the file naming format for voice files, specifically the file naming convention? Right. So if it's the narrator, then see, first it's uh, they all have S at the beginning. And O1 means scene number one. And M means it's the narrator. So here for scene two, we have a character. And that's a C. And one reply choice. So it's R for reply and O1 for the reply choice. So really all you have to do is just match whatever file names it shows in this column for all your files. As you can see here, there are three reply choices. So it's scene three, reply one, scene three, reply two, scene three, reply, reply three, etc. All right. And Brian, do you recommend MP3 or WAVE? You know, it really doesn't matter. MP3 is fine, but uh, it doesn't matter anyway because once you publish, then it, it will be converted anyway. But yeah, MP3 is fine. Uh, here, here are the formats it accepts. WAVE, MP3, and WMA. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, could you please show uh, rendered storyboard? Rendered storyboard. The question from I, Steve, he says, can we see rendered storyboard? So I guess it's just uh, the, you mean the dialogue tree. You mean the dialogue tree? Mm -hmm. Like I this? Think, I think it's... Or actually rendered like this. This is how this is how the final uh, the final product looks. But yeah, this is how this is how the tree looks. So basically, you can you can find out what scene connects to another one just by mousing over this line here. So as you can see, that's the end. That's an end point. But what they can do is they can go all the way back to the to the second scene if they like. Yeah, it's pretty intuitive. I, I hope all that right. answers your question. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. And um, oh, by the way, just real quick to 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 show you guys again, if you want to color code these, just go to properties and select a color, and that makes it a lot easier to to find out where you are in the dialogue. 
All right, and Elena, there is one question for you from Darren. I'm wondering what the discount offer is for a new ice spring with the with the talent suite. So I guess it's ice spring suite. Uh, the special offer that we have for ice spring suite is a fifty. Uh, I'm sorry, a fifteen percent discount. So if you are interested in the uh, purchase of a new license. Just let us know and we'll send you the information on how to get it. Yeah, and the offer is good for Talkmaster and iSpring Suite. So just contact, right. uh, either contact our sales department or um, submit your email address like Elena just said. Okay, next, right. next question. Um, can the audio, and this is for you, Brian, can the yeah. audio be set to play automatically or to play on click? Can it be replayed by the user? Yes, it can be replayed by the user, but it will play automatically. Here's the little playback controls right here. Yeah, but it will play automatically. The user can stop it, though, and start mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So there is one question from Anne. She says that she bought iSpring some time ago and have upgraded to Suite version 7 but have not actually used it yet. Do we have tutorial videos available? Can we just show uh, to our attendees where they can find our video tutorials? Oh yeah, sure. So you can either go to our YouTube channel or right here on our website this was for iSpring Suite, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right, so right here on our website you can go to support, video tutorials, and just select Suite. And eventually it'll open up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And it's divided by category. So it's pretty easy to find. Pretty easy to find what you need. Yep. yep. All right, and back to Talkmaster. When you export script, does it export narrator, user, and character parts and identify them as such? So yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It looks just like this little, this little table right here. And it shows file names and everything. And it'll export it to uh, Windows document format, Word, Word document. And another question from Ken. Can we add video to the Talkmaster, for example, for training students for a procedure that they will be performing, or other software in iSpring that can do that? Right. Currently, you can't add video directly to a dialog simulation. I'm sure we'd be happy to add that as a feature request. What I'd recommend you do for now is just create a PowerPoint. You can insert a video on a slide. You can make it a YouTube video or just, just use the uh, PowerPoint insert feature over here. And uh, then, then you can just branch it to the dialogue simulation right after the, the slide containing the video, for example. Right, so this, this will be a part of a course. Right. And uh, the same question was from Lin Lindro about Hey, you know what, guys? Hmm? I would love to show you this really cool little feature here. For example, let's say you have a dialogue simulation on a slide, and, you, and this previous slide contains the video. What you can do is you can inching so that if the person passes the dialogue simulation, it'll take them to the next slide, but if they don't pass, you can have it take them right back to that video so they can watch it again. That's really cool. Awesome. <laughs> All righty. Okay, another question from uh, Ellie. Using the record feature, can you combine various takes of one scene into one file? I love this question. I saw that earlier and I couldn't wait for it. <laughs> so the cool thing you can do with iSpring is once you have something recorded, absolutely, you can record three takes, four takes, however many takes you want, and then just go to the editor 
and let's say for you know what I do when I'm doing takes is I I do a finger snap or something so you can see a sharp spike here in the yeah so you can see a spike between takes all you got to do is find your favorite take and you can trim it out and there's other cool features too like remove noise Th this has already had the noise removed from it so you can see a nice flat line there between words but yeah I love that feature okay <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Um, there's a question sure. from Catherine. Is there any chance that a student character will be added in the library of characters? Student character. Let's see. Yeah, you're right. I don't really see any super student looking <laughs> characters. What I would recommend you do is you can go to the eLearning Brothers website and they've got as many characters as you could possibly want. Right, or you still contact, or you still could contact us because we are official yeah. e-learning brother partners. So we'll be happy to help. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just contact us. We'll, we'll be showing you our contact information after the Q and A. So stick around. So um, a little bit. Somehow, I think, related question from Holly. She says, I've seen scenarios on e-learning brothers that has backgrounds like desks with post-it notes for the replies. Is that built-in TalkMaster or are they using PowerPoint? Uh, no, see, in TalkMaster for the reply choices, you'll always see them down here at the bottom. Currently, uh, you can't customize the location of reply choices. They're just right now. They're just in a very logical location. You got the characters text here, and then you got reply choices down here. But that sounds like a great feature request. That's true. And Brian, if you clip on a box, does it go go to or show the image? If you click on a box. And I'm not sure what kind of box. Hey, if you click on a box in the tree, does it take you to oh. that question response image? Sorry, Lynn, I didn't <laughs> see your uh, latest question. I apologize. Yeah, so when you click on one of these, it'll take you to the scene. And there are basically three areas here. You have the content, the images, and the properties. The properties, as I showed you before, just change the color and the score and the images show the character in the background and the content shows reply options, character speech, feedback message, whatever you got. So that's Emotion. pretty convenient. Can, yeah. Can, yeah. Can get back to any uh, part of the tree right away. Right. Right. And there's one more question. Um, Actually, two questions from Steve. So one is, do you recommend as a best practice voice and narration? Oh, so you mean voices for the characters and the narrator. Well, it really depends. I mean, if, if your feedback messages are extremely important, then yes, I would recommend including including voiceovers for the narrator as well. But, but uh, it's definitely most important for characters because what you want basically is a whole combination of social cues. You want a, you want to see if somebody's angry, and you want to hear if somebody's angry. So that really encourages the learner to shape up and fly right, for example. Or you know, give them positive feedback. They look happy. They sound happy. That's what people want. Right. So yeah, definitely for the character. And uh, another question from Steve, how do you import images? Which I assume is maybe background and uh, characters. Yeah, let me show you that one more time. So here in the images, and you can also access it just by clicking here as well. Yeah, you can add character just by clicking this button and add background right here. So right up here in the right hand corner. Perfect. Simple. Yeah, uh, a question from Liz. Is it possible to have two characters in a simulation? Yes, yes it is. So what you can do, for example, is uh, just go to number two here, change it to this guy. So we'll just preview that. And when we start, it'll be that guy. Hey, I thought I was talking to some other guy. <laughs> 
But yeah, you can you can say, for example, you can have the the one character excuse himself for whatever reason and have have his manager show up or something right. like that. <laughs> and uh, in case Liz meant uh, having two characters simultaneously on one uh, scene, I know that we have. Uh, this feature request sent over to our product development team and they will be working on it. They will definitely put it on a plan. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, can the score, a question from Bonnie, can the score be linked to Blackboard's grade center? Right. So if you're using Blackboard, let, let me just show you the scoring again. First you go to properties. Enable simulation evaluation, set your passing score, and then assign points to individual successful scenes right here. And then once you publish, we actually have a Blackboard building block. So when you publish, first you select this LMS tab, select the learning course tab here, select Blackboard, and you can download the iSpring building block just by clicking this link here. And then, yeah, just upload it to Blackboard, and there you go. Okay, cool. And um, we have uh, two questions that are mostly um, sounds alike. Um, if you import a character, will it also show the different emotions? And then a question from uh, Girish. If we choose a character from an external source, my own images, I can have the character display the various emotions and link the emotions to a corresponding character image. Would that work? Right. Right. Yeah, that does work. Um, actually, I don't have any character images here, but... Uh, Let's see, I think I have some pics here somewhere I can use. I don't know. I'll just <laughs> use one of my one of these. Anyway, yeah, once you click this, you can right click it and then edit it. And yeah, so then you'll insert individual pictures for each emotion. And you can click here to learn how to create a character as well. So once you import a character, it'll appear here in this custom area and right-click to edit, and then insert individual pictures for these five emotions. Okay, good. And uh, a question from Martin. What's the advantage of the Blackboard building block over just exporting a SCORM 2004 version 4? My IT guys seem... Reluctant to install the building block. Oh, fine then. Use SCORM 2004 version 4. Make your <laughs> IT guys happy. There's SCORM 2004 version 4. That's all you got to do. I mean, it, if it makes the IT guys happy, then go right ahead. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> we, we got options at iSpring. <laughs> right. <laughs> And another question from Steve. Do you guys know by any chance uh, will Tin Can be available anytime soon? It's available right now. It, they just call it they call it Experience API now. Right. It's the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at this point, we've answered all the questions. So guys, we right. still have a couple of minutes uh, in case you would like to ask about anything else. And for those of you who have submitted um, your email addresses in the question box, we will be contacting you soon after the webinar ends. So look out for our message. And Steve okay. says, awesome job. Thank you very much, Steve. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Why don't I uh, let you show your screen so they can see our contact information. Okay, Paulina? Sure. Or Elena, whoever has the slide open. You can share it. I mean, you can give me the presenter rights. I do have. Okay. Slide. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So, so there you go. Jeffrey says we could get real fancy and import our own multiple character images. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think That's it's right. pretty cool. Make it someone from the office, so it'll it'll really personalize your simulation. So I see a lot of thank you, thank you, thank you 
from uh, our attendees. Uh, and All thank right. you guys More for attending, welcome. for actually right. making this webinar happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, everybody. All right. So <laughs> what I wanted to say uh, is that we're going... We're about to have <clears throat> such webinars on a regular basis from iSpring. So if you have um, any suggestions or topics that are really, really interesting to you, uh, you're more than welcome to submit them to sales at iSpringSolutions.com. And we'll be happy to work on them and put uh, to, to have a, a webinar that's, that will be a good fit for you guys. All right. So yeah. thank you one more time, Alina and Brian, um, sure. for joining this webinar today. And thank you all our attendees. We hope you enjoyed it yeah. as much as we did. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you, Paulina. Keep the great questions coming. Yep. <laughs> so I think right. that we're ready to wrap up at that time. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Goodbye.